All right, here we are inside of Cinema 4D and I've already fired up Octane. So let's drop in a plane to start. And I'm going to start with an Octane Diffuse material. Uh, we can also get to that through this menu here, Octane Diffuse material. Uh, and then I'll pop that on the plane here. And if I jump into this, I can go down to the Displacement tab. And if you're on the newest version, you will have this button called Add Displacement. Um, which actually just loads a displacement node. So if I go to my node editor, you'll you'll see here if I click get active material You'll see that it's just added a displace to the displacement So you can do that manually if you don't have the newest version then we're going to jump into this displacement um, And this is where we're going to want to load our texture. So either here or here um, so let's find My displacement map here So it's this one And right off the bat, you can see something's happening, but it looks pretty janky and low res. So the reason is that it's currently set to levels of detail 256 by 256. So we just got to bump that up to 8K, which is what we rendered our displacement map as. Uh, and immediately you should see that we've got all of this crazy extrusion and detail. Now we can't get that close to it. At some point it gets kind of breaks down and gets these weird artifacts, but it works really well from a bit of a distance. Um, and you can do fun things like we can totally blow out this displacement and get this kind of crazy looking city or uh, we can just be subtle with it and get this kind of more I don't know Death Star looking kind of interesting surface and it's cool if we look from the top here we can kind of see where we had those puzzle piece type um, chunks that we put in there that were darker um, so it's kind of cool seeing our illustrator artwork affect all of this geometry all right, so I'm just going to take this and make a much bigger floor real quick. Um, so if I hold down Option or Alt while I click the cloner, it makes it a child of the cloner. And right now I'm going to, let's see, I'll change it to grid mode here. There we go. Um, and I'll turn on render instances. And we actually, we don't need any additional instances in Y. So I'm just going to take this down to one here. Um, and one really interesting thing is you can see right now I've only got two tries. So this is Octane's form of polygons. So this is the geometry it's calculating. If I had more um, width and height segments, you'd see this would increase. But I took it down to one by one um, because it's actually calculating this geometry behind the scenes. And it's using this image to push the geometry up and down. But that's not affecting our geometry load time, which is really good. So we're kind of getting all of this displacement for free. Um, so I can kind of go in here and spread these out until they're just touching right here. So it looks like 800 is where we want and 800. And now we've got a much bigger floor and there's an interesting mode in R18 that I'd like to point out. Um, normally if we add more instances here, it'll just kind of pile on itself. But if we put this to per step, uh, what happens now if I spread this, let's bring these back down to three. If I spread this back out to where it's just touching, so it looks like 400 at this point, um, and I were to zoom out and add even more instances here, you'd see that it would just grow but not overlap. So it's calculating that offset there. And so now we've got this really, really big floor, and I'm still navigating around in real time, which is super awesome. Okay, so I can come all the way down in here and maybe we want to do some fun little uh, lighting and shallow depth of field. So let's pop in an Octane camera, jump inside the camera. Um, I will turn on my camera imager and then I'll just kind of play with this value and immediately we've got this cool shallow depth of field look. And I'll come to my post processing because I always like throwing a little bit of bloom on there for whatever reason. Um, and yeah, I think I'm happy with that. Right now the camera is set to autofocus, which I want. Um, until I'm making my final decisions because as I'm navigating around if I've got the shallow depth of field look on um, and I don't have this on then it can get um, say I focused here and I moved closer then I could end up somewhere weird and it, everything's out of focus but with autofocus it's constantly searching for that focus point for me which is kind of cool alright so let's add in a daylight here and I can come over here and just start twirling it around until I get something different looking um, somewhere around there could be cool like maybe slightly longer shadows here um, but one thing I don't like is how pink this gets so I can actually come into the 
uh, daylight uh, tag here and I can reduce this oranginess here so we can get something a lot more clean looking. I can also drop the power so it's not blowing out quite so much. Cool. So let's um, jump on in here and work on maybe our texture for um, for this displacement. So we can add our color map and some other things. So if I click get active material, this is we, what we've got so far. We've just got this bitmap loaded into this displacement. Um, and as I think I've mentioned in other tutorials, this bitmap node doesn't do as much as the image texture node. So let's drop this down here and we'll just copy this path here. Control C, Control V and replace it and nothing should change. I'm just going to delete this dude uh, there. And now we have the power to invert this whole texture. So we could get a totally different look by inverting the texture. So now we've got something that's perhaps even more interesting. Um, so I'll stick with that for now. Um, so beyond this, uh, let's load in our color map. So let's just drop in another image texture, put that into the diffuse and let's bring in our color here and at first this might look like totally horrendous but we're going to add more to it so if we don't like the colors we could always drop in a color correct node so let's see color correction so you can just drop it right on here um, you can also take nodes say you had a node out here you can take it and hold down alt and then it'll connect uh, so that should work too so let's get rid of that one um, and then in the color correct node, we can affect the brightness or the hue. Like maybe this is a better set of colors here. The saturation, so we could desaturate. You can also affect the gamma too. So maybe we lighten it up slightly. Um, but let's add a little bit more to this. So first off, I think we're still in a diffuse texture. So let's come down and change it to glossy. And now you should see some kind of like reflections starting to pop in, which is pretty cool. Um, maybe instead of our daylight let's load in an HDRI so I've got this uh, HDRI button here again you can go to your objects are all here HDRI environment uh, that's where you'll also find this daylight and all your other stuff I just like to create buttons because it makes it easier for me so I'll jump into this here and I like let me navigate to my textures real quick so I like these sky maps from Video Copilot's Jet Strike Pack for whatever reason. They're kind of fun to play around with. So um, I'll choose this sky map here. And if I navigate around, you should be able to see. Zoom way out. And actually, we're not seeing it right now because what's happening is the daylight system overrides the HDRI system until you untick this. So now we'll actually see our full uh, sky map we look around so that's cool and maybe I'll take off uh, take this all the way back down to infinity real quick so we can kind of see our sky map so that's neat um, we can jump back to where we were okay so if I boost the power of this um, things come a little bit more to life and I can rotate it around you'll see the reflections actually playing off the surface which is cool um, so now maybe we could even combine the daylight system and um, this HDRI. So what you can do is in your daylight here, you can turn on uh, mixed sky texture and this will mix the two systems. So this is still affecting everything and so is this daylight. So if I rotate around the daylight, I can get these kind of sharper shadows, but also get all the reflections from the HDRI. So sometimes this is totally like the way to go. Um, Let's see, so at this point, when the two systems are mixed, this uh, power slider no longer functions for whatever reason. Here, I'll demo this for you. So if I turn this off, this power slider does work. If I turn this on, it stops working until I jump into the image texture and start messing with this internal power. It's kind of weird, kind of uh, quirky to get your head around. Um, yeah, so you can still boost the power of your HDRI when you're mixing the two systems. Um, cool, so you know something like that kind of looks neat. So let's continue on. Um, I am going to, now that we've got our color map looking a little bit better, we've got some reflections in there, we can add a bump map. 
So I'm actually going to drop in another image texture here. Let me kind of give myself some more real estate. Um, drop in another image texture and clean this up a little bit. And I'll connect this to the bump. And this gets a little finicky. All right, so let's um, drop in. I'm going to cheat here. And I'm going to go back to my displacement maps. And instead of one of the displacement maps I made, I'm going to use Beeple's Super Grebe just for the bump. And I don't. it's difficult to see what happens. So if I go to Compare, Store Render Buffer, and then disconnect this, we should be able to see what's actually happening. So let's uh, wipe this. And sometimes it gets difficult to grab this if you've got this Focus Picker selected. So let's untick that. And then there we go. Now we can see kind of we're adding additional lines and stuff, but maybe that's not as much of an effect as I want to see. So if we come back to this and pipe it back into the bump and then add a UV transform here, that means we can now lock the aspect ratio and scale our texture. So now you can really see what's happening, especially if I untick this enable AB comparison. Um, you can see that we're adding in additional detail especially if I get really close look at all this additional stuff that we're adding uh, to the texture so we could get really really close to this stuff and still see some detail um, so that is pretty cool I think I'm gonna be all finicky here and uninvert this displacement map because I think I like the look of it better here and I'm going to add my shallow depth of field back in just because I like it. Not that shallow. So that looks kind of cool to me. All right. And lastly, I'm going to add in a roughness map, which if you remember from previous tutorials, the roughness is the blurriness of the reflection. So we can kind of blur this out a little bit. But if we add a texture to it, we'll actually see some variation in uh, the roughness and the blurriness of the reflection, which kind of looks cool. It adds an extra layer of realism. So if we drop an image texture in here and pipe it into the roughness, I'm just gonna find one of my favorite uh, textures here. Let's use this one, but any black and white map will do. And it's not really clear what's happening at first. So one really good way to check what's actually happening is if instead of piping this into the roughness at first, we test it in the diffuse. So let's put it into the diffuse and now you can see we're adding all this little grunge all over the place um, so especially if I let's go to our UV transform here and again scale this so we can scale it down you can see what it's doing it's adding all this craziness here or you can scale it we could scale it way up um, but let's go for that kind of finer look there that's kind of interesting I think it's might be stretching a little bit, but it's kind of unintentional right now. So what we can actually do is go to this image texture and there's another button down in here uh, next to UV transform that says projection. And this will add yet another node called projection. So I'm making a big old mess of these nodes here. So you can see texture projection. Uh, and instead of mesh UV, we can just change this to box. And now you should see it update and properly kind of be uh, UV'd and cube mapped to all of this geometry. So maybe now it's looking a bit small. So we can come back here, go to our transform, and kind of scale it up a little bit. Um, so let's call that cool. Um, and instead of keeping it in the diffuse, again, we'll put it back in the roughness map. So we get this variation. Um, and if we want this to be even more extreme, like it's not especially noticeable right now, we can drop a gradient in here. So a gradient will basically clamp the values. Um, so let's drop a gradient between these and let's just kind of crunch it down these values towards each other. And again, it's kind of hard to see what's going on until we put it in the diffuse. And now we can really see what's going on. So we're creating almost this like paint look. So that's going to affect all those reflections in that area. And one other thing we could do is just invert the entire texture here. Um, invert. 
and mess with the gamma. So maybe we want it to be more like that. So we really get it going. Um, and now let's put this back into the roughness. And now we should really see that difference once we put our color back in. Okay, this becomes even more apparent if we remove the color channel for a second and take our diffuse down from white down to something much darker, we can see the reflections a lot better. Um, and if I kind of come around here um, and maybe boost up our HDRI, um, and again, we gotta go into it and boost it up because we mixed those two systems. And maybe we brighten this exposure even more you can really start to see that roughness map taking effect and pooling in these interesting areas. So I think once we put this color channel back in though, it's gonna be all crazy bright and blown out. So what we could actually do is we could mix it down with this power slider. So we could just bring in a little bit of color that way. Okay, so one other thing that looked cool was when we actually had this grunge map in the diffuse channel. I thought that kind of looked neat, though this is a little, this is way too extreme, so we would want to mix this down. But um, what if we actually, so we use it in the roughness map, but what if we also use it um, in the diffuse channel somehow? So how could we mix this color with, um, with the output of this grunge map? There's a node down here called multiply, so we could just pop that in here and it's basically like a blend mode in After Effects. It's taking one channel and multiplying it by the other, one texture and multiplying it by the other. So you can see now we get this crazy, like super grungy thing going on. Um, though here, the gradient is too extreme. So um, let's make this kind of like a little bit lower. So just something like that. Um, or maybe actually, I liked it bright, but maybe the dark is crunched in too hard. We could separate these out a little bit to get some more crazy variations. Um, and then finally, we wanna bring back our roughness map so we can just basically create a copy of this gradient here. Uh, hold down, I think control and drag. And then we'll pop this in here and add this back into our roughness map. And then with this gradient, we can further play with it. I think we had it more extreme here so yeah, just giving you an idea of all the kind of interesting ways you could play with this texture. I'm gonna move on and actually apply this to a cube at this point. So we've got our giant crazy field going on. We don't actually need this much geometry anymore, so let's bring this back down to like three by three and kind of come back in here. And um, I'm just gonna create a cube. Um, there it is, and I'm just gonna duplicate this texture to cube, and already we've got some interesting stuff going on. Um, I probably wanna rotate the lighting around here until we can see what, what's going on a little bit better. There we go. So that is already looking kinda cool. Um, and let me give myself a little bit more room. Okay. Um, and so let's try to recreate that composition uh, that we had going on from uh, that reference. So right now we have a really kind of wide angle lens and it's difficult to get the same look. But when I was looking at his artwork, um, it looked very flattened, uh, like as if it was shot from a really long lens. So right now we're at 36 and what we can do is we can zoom way out or we can dolly way out rather, hold down um, two and then right click instead of left click and then we can dynamically zoom in so you can see how it's changing focal length so I'm just gonna zoom into some kind of like really long lens and you can see how much bigger this stuff kind of feels all of a sudden um, so I really like what's going on there um, now one interesting thing about this displacement is it can sometimes come apart at the seams so if I go back to my displacement down here um, sorry for this mess of nodes if I go down to this displacement you can see there's this option called mid-level and what this will do is it'll actually kind of bring it closer or further away um, from, I guess you can't go negative. Sometimes these are really separated and it gets uh, super annoying. But yeah, we just wanna kind of bring this in a little bit. So there we go. 
Okay, so we're getting closer here. Um, let's add in those cubes. So we can just kind of add in a couple additional cubes. Uh, this one, let's make it, let's just make the size one on Y and then we'll push it up here. Actually, let's make it something like, let's call it five. There we go. And let's move it uh, 20 on this. Actually, in the coordinate, let's move it 20 or 15 or so. I think 15 looks good. And 15 this way. And then we'll just make uh, another cube here. Do something really similar where um, we'll go to this object and we want this one to be five in this axis. So hopefully you can kind of get an idea of what I'm doing here. Um, I need to give myself a little more room and I'll push this back until it kind of pops on through here. Uh, so let's just call it 101 is the value we'll use for this. So this one should also be 101. And again, 15 is our magic number. So we'll move this down 15. I'm just trying to make this whole thing symmetrical. Um, it's 15 there. And now we just need one more cube here. And this one was um, under the object. This one was five on X. This one was five on Y. So this one we want five on Z. And then we want to move the coordinate on Z until it pops out. And it's at 101. Okay, now we want to move this down 15 and over 15. Okay, so we're getting close to setting up our composition here that we liked. Um, let's make this a little bit taller again so we can see a little bit more what's going on. This is obviously really, really bright. So let's, um, let's create a new material. So let's create a new glossy material. And again, that would be under materials, octane glossy material. Let's add it to all the cubes here. And let's make this one pretty dark. Cool. Um, I think that this is, yeah, this is good. This is reflecting our floor. Um, so one other thing we can do, let's make it even darker. And now we can take all three of these cubes go to our fillet, turn that on, uh, and now you'll see it starting to catch kind of light on this edge here, though we only need like probably one or even less on the bevel. And the next thing I'm gonna wanna change is just the lighting. I don't really like this daylight or these environments, so I'm going to kind of light this myself, and I'll show you how I would go about doing that. Um, on this octane sky, instead of having an HDRI, I can just load in uh, a C4D octane RGB spectrum, which is literally just a color, and I'm going to make it pretty close to black. Um, and then I'm going to kill this daylight. So right now we've just got this one color lighting the whole scene. So let's make it even darker a little bit. And so I'll kind of move around and show you what we've got. Um, so what I want to do now is add in some area lights, which I think will help it a lot. Um, so if I go to options, I can untick check camera. And what that allows me to do is I can pop out of the camera and navigate around and light my scene without it affecting my hero view. So let's um, throw down one of these area lights here. And actually I'm gonna start with a targeted area light. I just find it makes it a little bit easier and I'm gonna ask it to target the camera. So target the camera and so wherever I move this, it'll point towards the camera. Right now it's a bit too big. Um, so you can see there's the camera. Wherever I move it to, it's gonna kind of point at that camera. So that helps me just kind of positioning the lights at first. And I'll scale it down even more. So the smaller we make the light, the harder the light's gonna be. We're gonna have these more intense, like hard um, glints. And if you make it really big and then decrease the power so the bigger you make it the brighter it'll get but um, it'll also become a much more even light so that's really good to be aware of that the the scale of your lights really affects the quality of the light as well in your scenes so I'm going to start with kind of this hard light here 
um, and then I'll take off the tag at this point because I don't really need it anymore because I've kind of positioned it so I can kind of point it down like something like that and I'm totally winging this and then I'll duplicate out a light by holding control you can see I can kind of light in real time which is super useful um, these cubes are not working for me they've got to be I think um, let's see let's make them like 15 I want them to intersect so actually like 25 and let's call this one 25 and this one 25 okay it's getting closer now they're all kind of too far out extruded so let's make um, let's make 95 the magic number 95 and finally uh, this one here Ninety five and the bevel is also way too big. So let's go to our fillet radius and make it like point one. Cool, so that's a little bit better. And let's continue lighting our scene. So I'm just gonna keep dragging these area lights around until I'm happy with how they look. That's bringing some nice light in there. That's catching a little more of the edge. And now maybe I want to power this up and scale it down to get even more of a hard light. Um, and I could even change the color. So maybe make it a little more blue. And maybe I'll make this one, uh, if I add in to this texture here, an RGB spectrum, I can maybe make it even a little cyan. though maybe that's a little too much um, and then if I want so I'm gonna keep art directing this again the cubes are too still way too far out for my liking let's go 92 92 92 okay I'm liking that a little bit better um, let's come back to our camera and nothing's gonna change until we go back to our check camera here. So I'm gonna actually probably zoom out a little bit because I wanna see more of what's going on. I think I got a little too close for starters. So maybe I like that composition better and maybe a little more down, looking down on it. Okay. Um, and then let's add a kind of interesting texture to this. So let's go into our roughness map again and just um, add in maybe this one here. You can see instantly we get this different look. Though actually for this one I, I want to add in some smudges. So again I'm going to go back to my node editor, get active material. I'm going to replace this with an image texture so I can scale it. And then this one I want to be, I'm gonna to go to my reserve here and kind of find um, a polygon texture from polygon.com. So I'm gonna to go to my textures, polygon overlays. So I've got all of these like kind of smudges. Let's try this one. As you can see the smudges starting to come up. Now we're gonna to want again to UV transform, all this same stuff that we've already learned, uh, lock aspect ratio and start scaling this down. So real quick, there's a small issue on the sides here. If you ever have stretching, um, you can also just select all the materials here and change them from UVW mapping to qubit mapping. So Octane will also respect that uh, change on this level versus you can also do it on this projection node in here if you add this projection. So that's just good to know that you can change it here to box or you can change it all the way up here to cubic. So either one of those works. So that fixes a really small issue, um, and I'm going to keep messing with this glossiness here. Um, I think I want this diffuse to be even darker, and you know what is missing is the index of refraction. Let's make this way more metallic. 
So there we go, now we're starting to kind of reveal some more interesting stuff. Okay, and let's mess around with this texture a little bit more. Um, I'm not really loving these smudges, so let's try another one. Let's go for this fingerprint overlay. Cool, I think that looks a little bit neater, though it's really, really big, so maybe let's scale it down a little bit. So let's go to our transform and scale it a little bit like that. So I think that is kind of more of the look that I want to go for. Um, again, let's go to our objects, uh, not objects, let's go to our check camera and untick that so I can keep lighting the scene because right now I've only got kind of one light that's really doing that much work. I'm going to kind of tick these off to see what they're even doing. So these two aren't doing a whole lot. So let's just get rid of that one and let's move this guy over make it a little bit bigger and we can also kind of stretch it out might get a more interesting look and let's boost the power until we can see its contribution there we go now we're seeing a little something um, we can make it a little warmer maybe that is interesting I think I'm liking that a little bit better so it's just about playing around until you find something that is appealing to your eye. Um, if I come back to my camera here, um, I can turn back on check camera because otherwise these controls in here won't work. And I'm going to do my favorite thing, which is go down to my ectochrome profile, which is going to totally make things out of whack. Uh, and then I'm going to kind of boost the gamma a little bit here and then turn the white point a little more orangey so that we kind of compensate against that. And already I'm liking this look a lot better, though it's kind of a little magenta, a little too saturated. So actually just made it worse, so let's pull it this way. There we go, I'm liking that a little bit better. Let's boost the gamma a little bit more so it's not so crazy. And then drop the exposure a little bit. Kind of dial these values against each other until we're happy. So that's pretty interesting. I think the displacement itself is a little too crazy. So I can always go back to my displacement here, get active material, go to displacement and change the height to maybe two. So I think I like that look a lot better. It's a lot cleaner looking. And again, we can always see like what inverting this texture would look like too. So I'm actually liking that. So I'm gonna stick with that. And then the final piece of the composition was just uh, creating kind of a set selection on one of these faces. So if I go to these faces and go US, 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 I can subdivide this a bunch of times. And then UL is loop selection. Hold down control to deselect. And I can have this face and go to set selection here. And then I can do the same thing for this face here. US, 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 US. I think one more time. UL, deselect, and then deselect there. And then I'll set selection on that. And then finally, for the top one, US, a bunch of times, UL. Cool. And then I'll set selection on that guy. So now we can have yet another material. If I uh, just duplicate this glossy material and change the diffuse up here so we can see it. So I'll make a brighter metal. Uh, we can drop it on there and then put in our selection tag. So you can see what that's doing. So let's just duplicate this over. Um, and then let's bring this back down um, and change. Maybe we'll change the specular color to like a gold and that will actually make it look like a gold. There we go, that's kind of neat. Maybe let's go blue. Cool, I definitely like that better. The last thing I would like to see is more of a highlight on this top here. So again, compare uh, options, actually untick check camera zoom out here 
and let's just get one strong backlight going. So let's duplicate one of these guys and make it a smaller light, kind of bring it around until we see it hitting. There we go, I can see it now. And again, let's make this taller. And with this light, I'm gonna make it a little bit warmer maybe and really boost the power so we can see what its contribution is. So there we go, now it's really affecting it. But I think it's too low, let's bring it up higher. There we go, that's what I'm looking for. It's obviously way too bright. Um, let's bring that down. Make it even smaller for that kind of harder light. Um, give myself some room to work here. Kind of like that highlight there. Now we really want to drop the power down. That's kind of cool. So you just play around until you find awesomeness. So I'm digging that little highlight there. I can still cheat it around. There we go. I think I'm happy with that. I'll call it good. And lastly, I took down the color because I can't stop tweaking. All right, I think I'm happy. I'm never happy. I'm so depressed. Okay, I swear that this is the last thing, I swear. Um, so this is just one small thing that I forgot, but under the camera imager, I found that this button uh, really helped. So it's under thin lens, perspective correction. This is used for like architectural rendering, uh, but it also just kind of stretched everything out in an interesting way uh, that I liked. So. Let me pull this up here so we can see our final render. I'll let that refine for a second and click get rid of this stuff here so we can see the whole thing. Cool stuff. All right, and my final tweak was to mess with this uh, fingerprint overlay and make it a little less intense. All right, thanks so much for watching, you guys. Um, that's just the bare minimum of what Octane's displacement can do. It's one very small niche, but it can do about a million other things. So thanks so much for watching. If you liked it, hit the like button. If you hated it, go rabble, rabble, rabble in the comments. Um, and any questions you have, leave me a comment, and I'll get to you and answer you. So um, some of that might have been confusing. I was up pretty late tonight. Hopefully. It it all came out okay, but if there were any buttons that I kind of glossed over or anything that weird that happened, uh, let me know and I'll get back to you. So I'll see you in the next one. Thanks. Bye, everybody.